And I just think we have the totally wrong understanding of what love is. I really believe that everybody connects it to their feelings. And that's just not what it is. Yeah. It's not It's not theory. It's not a sermon. Yeah. It's action. It's yeah. how you treat people. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Hi, everyone. We have a really important topic for you today. And I don't know anyone who would say I don't need this topic. Mm. (laughs) We are talking today about how to love people that are hard to love. My Lord. (laughs) Ah, <laughs> uh, Joyce, Joyce has written a book on it, and I'll tell you, we we need it, and, yeah. and really, the world right now needs this more than ever. And there, you know, we're all hard to love at times, so we mm-hmm. can't act like that we never are. But there are some people that are just really extra, extra hard to love. And one of the first things to remember is they probably are like that because they're hurting somewhere in their life. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody gets out of bed and just purposely tries to be obnoxious all day long. Yeah. You know, that I, a lot of people that are behaving badly don't even realize that they are. Or they just are hurting so bad they don't have any self-control. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of years in my life where I wasn't very nice, but I didn't really even hmm. realize because I'd been raised around people that weren't very nice. Right. <laughs> and so yeah. I was just acting out of what I saw. And been through a lot that yeah. shaped your personality at that time. Right. yeah. That... So there are so many people that we come across yeah. every day mm-hmm. that we don't know what's happening behind the scenes right, yeah. Yeah. and how their worlds are just turned upside down. Yeah, yeah and you, if mm. something has to be done about all the hatred and the anger that's in the world today. And I don't, I don't know any way to try to get people to change other than to convince them it's a one-by-one decision. Everybody has to make their decision. And if enough Christians, because there really are a lot of us, if enough Christians would just make the decision. Yeah. Because it's not just unbelievers that are mad and angry. Oh, certainly not. (laughs) The Christians, we can be the worst sometimes. It's true. And very judgmental and critical. And, you know, we think that what I believe is right and nobody else, Mm -hmm. you know, knows anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that attitude, the Bible says in Ephesians four thirty two that it or twenty nine that it grieves the Holy Spirit, mm. yeah. and that's when you really think about that. That's that's bad. Yeah. And yeah. since He lives in us, if He's grieved, I think we feel that that's good. grief too. So I think a lot of people are unhappy, yeah. and they don't even realize it's because yeah. of their own yeah. attitude. Mm-hmm. And uh, the really important thing that I hope to try to get across to people through this book and the different teachings is that love is not a feeling. Mm. Yeah. It, you know, there, there is a type of love that produces romantic feelings, but it's not the agape mm-hmm. love that Jesus has for us, that mm-hmm. God has for us. He, he loves us in a, in a way that has nothing to do with our behavior. It's, he loves us literally into wholeness. Yeah. And, uh, People get married on feelings, and then when the feelings are gone, they get divorced, or when something doesn't turn out the way they thought it would, they get divorced, or somebody hurts them, they get divorced. And right. we have to learn that, that love is it's a decision that you make about how you're going to treat someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All people. Yeah, all yeah. people. Yeah. All people. That's the simplest way I know how to say it. So we're going to get real practical and yeah. give some help for all of us, because we need it. Yeah. We need we really to do. know how to do this better. Yeah. Right. But first, we're going to start with a little clip from Joyce teaching. She's going to tell us about how, this is such great news, even the disciples had a hard time getting along sometimes. <laughs> so let's listen to this. 
Then Peter came to Jesus. This is all, just one verse after another. It's all the same subject. Then Peter came to Jesus and said, how many times can my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go? As many as seven. <laughs> I think that's interesting. You know, Peter had probably heard the rabbis teach, which they did teach in those days, that we must forgive three times, but the fourth time we don't need to forgive. I don't know where they came up with that, but that was what they taught. So Peter figured that Jesus' standard would be a little higher, but he surely didn't think it would be any more than seven. <laughs> Why would Peter even ask a question like that? Well, I'm totally convinced that those 12 disciples did not all like each other <laughs> and did not all appreciate each other. There's enough information in the Bible for us to know that there was competition between them. They were jealous of each other. And I think it's pretty plain that Peter had a little bit of a hard time with John's personality. <laughs> I mean, how would you like to be Peter, bold, aggressive, doesn't use a lot of wisdom with his mouth, quick-tempered? How would you like to hang out with somebody who calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loves? I am, and John wrote the book of John. <laughs> and he said that repeated times. I am the disciple that Jesus loves. <laughs> and his whole personality was different. He was just real relational and hanging around, you know, loving Jesus. And <laughs> Peter, he's a man of action. He wants to go do something. And so they, they had issues, just like we have issues with people. It is, you know, this myth of finding anybody that's perfect is just useless because everybody may be a rose, but they come with thorns. There's good, there's strengths, and there's weaknesses in everybody. And the more you are with any one person, <laughs> the more they are likely to irritate you in some way. And these 12 guys live together all the time. So you're all poking each other and like. <laughs> oh, listen, I love my husband tremendously, but he does things that irritate me. And the funny thing about Dave is when he knows he irritates me, then he does it more just to irritate me more because he thinks it's funny. <laughs> and I won't get into Dave's stories or I'll never get my message finished, but he's. I mean, I could give you a big, long list of things that he does. I'm sure I do things too, but he just never says anything about it like I do. I'm happy to tell him what he does that irritates me. And he, like I said, he thinks it's funny. He's like, oh good, now I'll do it some more. So Jesus said, not up to seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven. And he really, he basically was just saying however much, how many, however many times it takes. Now, you know, to forgive the same person for the same thing over and over gets even harder than forgiving somebody for something once. Now, forgiveness doesn't always mean that you need to stay in some kind of a deep relationship with somebody, but it has to do with your heart attitude toward them. And one of the things we have to realize is that hurting people hurt people and we need to take a little more time to pray about and be more discerning, not about just what people do, but maybe why they did it, why they behave the way they behave. I love that you said, it's just <laughs> such honesty, that the more you're around someone, they are eventually going to annoy you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, it's just, <clears throat> just the way it is. And the disciples were together all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. So we all have the potential for that rose, but right. those thorns are there too. Right. So who would you call the prickly people in your life? <laughs> who are the oh, ones? It's dangerous to call that Not, out. No, I, I don't want names. Do you want a list? No, oh, no names. I was going to say, you're, no, no, no. you're trying to start something. <laughs> I was ready. No, no, no. <laughs> pull it out. I got it here. I wrote it down. <laughs> no, but what type of people oh. do you find it more <laughs> difficult to, to love? Well, I was more like Peter. I am more like Peter. And so I would have had a hard time with John. 
I would have said, you know, why don't you just quit laying around making goo goo eyes and get up and do something? <laughs> quit making goo goo eyes, <laughs> Jesus. Get, get up and do something. something. We, we uh-huh. got work to do, John. And uh, I'm a type A choleric, and probably the personality that I have the most trouble with is a full on 100% sanguine who just wants to giggle about everything and just thinks life is one big party and. Mm. You know, because I'm a worker and I want everybody to be serious and let's get the job done and I'm not messing around. And one of the things that helped me more than anything to get along with people was finally getting it through my head that God did not create all of us alike. Right. Mm -hmm. And really, to a certain extent, people can't help the way they are. Now, obviously, if it's something that's against the Word, then we need to work with God to change it. But, I mean, you... If you're a fun-loving person and that's your motivation in life, that's the way you're going to be. And if you're a worker like I am, that's the way you're going to be. And so, you know, Dave is real laid back and easygoing, and I've wished numbers of times I could be like that, but I'm not like that, and I'm never going to be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm, about you guys? I'm, I'm pretty similar to that. Like mm-hmm. I, I like to I'm pretty type A. I like to get things done. And even though like sometimes I express myself in a more expressive way, people tend to think that I'm more extroverted than I really am. I'm pretty introverted, honestly, in, in real life with amongst the people that I care about. And so people tend to want me to be on. Mm. All the time, so that like that the the, mm-hmm. the sanguines of the pe- people of the with world. unfair expectations. Yeah, because they see they they create this narrative of who they think I am, yeah. and expect me to live up to that versus who I truly am. Um, mm. That's one, and then another one is like when people like to sweep things under the rug, under the the I guess the vice of saying let it go, you know, instead of like having the the hard conversation and really getting to it. And then, you know, especially if we love each other, like to talk through it. You like to deal with stuff. I like to deal with it. I like to deal with it. I don't, I'm not the type of person that like, just likes to just act like it didn't happen. If mm-hmm. I know there's an elephant in the room, I'll be like, hey, there's an elephant in the room. How are we going to get it out? Like, so that, those are things that, that, trigger me like when it comes to being difficult to love people that yeah. you know like it seems like they sweep things under the rug and don't like to confront it or people that try to make me be who they want me to be mm-hmm. you know so that yeah. makes sense yeah, that's good people who complain a lot I have a really hard time with if, if those who see a glass half empty kind of view on life mm-hmm. which is probably really annoying to them because I am so glass half full and they're they're probably equally annoyed by me mm-hmm. um but that it is draining to me and it is just hard for me to feel that much empathy when right. there's not that much, there's good things happening too. So you're real positive and people that are real negative yes. obviously are hard for you to deal with. Yes, and they probably feel the same about me. Yeah. Um, and, and I also, similar to what you're saying, Jay, I have a hard time with people that I feel controlled by. And so this, I'm sure we'll talk more about this. I experienced this even with my husband in the past couple of years, um, his need to control out of fear, which you talk about in your book. I th- it, it was yeah. huge for me to learn that. He was operating out of fear, so that made him hold tighter, which made me want to back off and say, right. no, 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 I'm not doing that with you. And so that I don't like. And that made me have a really difficult time loving him in that, in that circumstance. Yeah. Something else that I don't like, I just thought of, which is a little <laughs> bit unique, is that if somebody all of a sudden, they blow up at me and they've got these 25 things that I've done over the yes. past number of years. Yes. They've been holding Stand on to them. They've been, and I didn't know. It's like... I can't fix something I didn't I'm know. Like, you know? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, well, you did this and you did that. And I'm like... And that bothered you? Mm-hmm. Well, why didn't you say something then? Yeah. You know, and, and so all that time they've been acting just like everything's fine between us when they've had that in their heart all along. And that's yeah. not an mm-hmm. honest relationship. Mm-hmm. Letting it fester and yeah. letting it, you know, yeah. become, I don't like that either. It's, and then, but then people like me, if little things... Um, and I, I, I'm sure that this makes me difficult to love to some people. Like if little things do kind of aggravate me, I don't say every little thing, but I am one of those people like, Hey, that hurt my feelings. So I don't, you know, and I'm sure that annoys people and makes people think I'm complaining or nitpicky, but I do like, cause I don't want it to fester. And then every time mm-hmm. you're, I'm around you, then you do something else and just piles and piles and piles. I am one of those people that are like, it's not a huge deal, but when you said that, that did kind of rub me the wrong way, you know? And so 
I could see how I can be difficult. And yet the to other side of that is, is the Bible says that love is not touchy. Yeah. So you have to find a balance in yeah. that. Otherwise, everything know. will get on my nerves. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that either. I didn't like that. What about you, Ginger? Who do you have a hard time with besides me? <laughs> we said no specific names. <laughs> well, wait a minute! You didn't deny it. <laughs> You know I love you, Miss Joyce. Um, no, I, I have so many similar ones. As I'm listening to each one of you, I'm like, yeah, 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 that person's really hard, too. Yeah. So you begin to realize, wow, I've got a lot of problems. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I don't think I like anybody. Because yeah. the, the people who are negative, negativity just pours out of some people. And, and I do have a really difficult time mm-hmm. with that. It's like, find something to be grateful for. Right. Mm-hmm. Think of a solution instead of a problem. I yeah. mean, those are all things that are really important right. to me. Mm-hmm. And and it is interesting how, like what you were saying, Jay, the things that are important to us are often the things that annoy other people, yes. you know? Yes. <laughs> so I, I don't like to not deal with things. I am a confronter. So I don't like when someone's just going to complain about something and not find a way to fix it. Mm-hmm. I don't enjoy people who don't listen. Um, I don't enjoy that either. I don't enjoy people who talk too much. <laughs> exactly. Any extreme. <laughs> so there, there are so many different things. And I think digging into some of those practicalities mm-hmm. of, okay, why, like what you said about Mike, why does this bother me so much? Right. Yeah. And how can I handle it differently? Right. It, it doesn't mean that I'm going to love it. Sure. But I can love the person who's doing it yep. and maybe find a way to work but through you're it. You're right. It is very good to examine your own heart about mm-hmm. why does this bother me so much? Yeah. And a lot of times the only answer is is because I'm not like that. Mhm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. so we have this yeah. pride problem mm-hmm. that says the way I behave is the way everybody should behave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what God had to really deal with me about. I thought, you know, well, I'm I'm quick at everything and you're slow and I'm this and you're that. And I had to realize that God loves all of us the same and right. he created us very differently. Yeah. And we can't have judgmental attitudes toward one another and be walking in love. I had this thought just recently because I was thinking, how can all of us, specifically Christians, who we all have like the same goal and the same vision. We like we love Jesus and right. we want to be good to his people. That's the same. How can we all think so differently and think we're all right? Like yeah. what is missing here? <laughs> that is so true. Right? Yeah. I, I, I just don't get it. And so I kind of had this revelation like everybody comes to the table with their own perspective, yeah. their own personality, their own life experience. Mm-hmm. And everything that I feel is based off of how I was created and what I've what I've experienced in my life. So therefore I think I'm right because of my experience. Yeah. But mine is so different than yours. So obviously we're humans, we're gonna bring yeah. those things to the table. That reminds me of a verse that I looked up for me because it's definitely one of my problems is, is exactly what you're saying. I didn't mean to shake my... Yeah, it is one of your problems. Well, it is. You can because you know me well enough. You can just lay it out there. Is I do want people to see why I'm right. <laughs> it's not just really? enough to be right. Oh, no. I want them to understand why I'm right. <laughs> there's proof. So there's a Bible verse. Um, it's, um, fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. Yeah. That's in Proverbs. And I read that recently. I thought, wow, that is so good. I I can be that fool who is just delighting in making sure people know what I believe in is right mm-hmm. instead of delighting in understanding one another and learning so much from each other. Yeah. And so, you know, I have to really physically take a step back and say, what do I need to do mm-hmm. in this situation? Is it time to shut my mouth? Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, is it time to ask more questions of them and try to understand how it is that they're feeling a little bit more? Or is this a time that I need to stand up and and yeah. be vocal and say, this is important? Yeah. yeah. So, it, yeah, I'm not great at that sometimes. That's why studying all the, the specific aspects of love in 1 Corinthians yes. 13 mm-hmm. yeah. is really so important because, you know, like I said to Jay, love is not touchy. Love is not rude. Yeah. 
It also says love gives up its right to be right. Ooh, that's, Ouch. A, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. I don't think that one's in my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Which version is that one? I don't want it. <laughs> Yours has that crossed out in trophy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the Joyce version. <laughs> but obviously, you know, we all go through that. We want to yeah. be. How many arguments do people have just trying to prove that they're right? Mm-hmm. And my oldest son, David, was very much like that. And he just caused so many arguments arguments because he was trying to prove he was right. And as he got a little bit older, I remember he said to me one day, he said, you know, I think I've finally figured out that being right is highly overrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like you think you've won, yeah, but in God's eyes, you've lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have to understand, and God will help you with that. If you just, I just encourage people watching to try that the next time you have a bad reaction to somebody, or even just to say, now, why don't I like that person? Yeah, I had that experience because it's it's very unlike me to naturally not like someone from the get go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually I need a good reason. Mm-hmm. But there's this one person, and right from the very beginning, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not you. We're all afraid it's it's not you. It's Aaron. No, <laughs> Joyce and I are both on her list. Good to know. No, 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 not at all. I, I, I loved you all from the very first start. But this this one person, and it shocked me. Like, why do I dislike this person so strongly? Yeah. And the things that they said and the things that they did, I was just like, I have got to get out of the presence of this person before, you know, yeah. I explode. And I, I finally realized mm. that they very strongly, in the way that they looked and acted, reminded me of someone else yep. mm. that had hurt me, that I had a very difficult relationship with. Interesting. And once I got that, it really did help. It didn't make it completely go away, let's right. be honest, Still but it like taught it. me how to love them in, yeah. spart of, in spite of the things that were hard to love. Yeah, yeah I had the same, same situation with... if. If I came up across anybody that had a personality like my dad's, mm. Ugh, yeah. I instantly just didn't like them. Mm-hmm. Or, or because I was so afraid of him, I would automatically start being afraid of that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we do. It, it's amazing, really, the damage that's done to a person if they're mistreated mm-hmm. in their childhood. Mm-hmm. And it just takes time and working with God to get over it. And the only only way you're going to get over it is to know the truth because that's what sets you free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, so you have to be honest with yourself about yourself and really pray that God will show you not just what's wrong with somebody else, but why am I responding that way? Right. If I'm supposed to love everybody and be able to forgive them and be patient and pray for them instead of being mad at them, then What's in me that's preventing me from doing that? I appreciate you so much sharing that um, for so many reasons. But for someone who didn't have trauma as a child, like I was just so blessed to grow up in a really great home. And so I don't have that perspective. To be around people who have trauma, and even even my husband had some stuff happen as a child that I, I didn't know about until we went to counseling the past couple of years. And hearing him talk about his experience gave me such empathy that I didn't know I needed to have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I'm, I'm so appreciative of you sharing because it helps people like myself know that it, <laughs> there is so much more happening here. Mm-hmm. Like he yeah. really is a hurt Deep person. Yeah. And no wonder he is acting the way he is. Again, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't excuse behavior. Right. But mm-hmm. I need to not think so much about myself that I'm forgetting about somebody else's pain. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important that we talk about yeah. that. Yeah. It's very true what you're saying because I've had... A number of people that tell me I'm married to Joyce. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I'll share my issues and my problems and the way I used to be and how God helped me, and they're still dealing with that in their spouse. Mm-hmm. So hearing me talk about the fact that there is hope of change, yeah, yeah, you know, it's huge. I have, I have something funny because, like, I've, <laughs> I've I've expressed <laughs> that you know I'm dating again, and we've already gone through that. Well, this one guy I was dating, well, I tried to I was just like eh, not gonna happen huh? <laughs> eh, not gonna happen and I had a friend of mine that was just like you're you're not even giving your heart mm. a chance to open up and love him because he doesn't look like the picture you've painted 
as to what your mm. comeback gonna look like. Oh, so many people. Oh, okay. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I have this because I'm just like I done been through all of this stuff with that last man. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like this next one, he's gonna do this. He's gonna have a yacht. No, no, <laughs> not that far. But it wouldn't be bad if he did. But I'm just saying, like all of these, this like list of things that I want my 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 next to mm-hmm. be or to look like <laughs> sure. that this guy did not like. Uh, it's like, uh. you know, like mm-hmm. you know that a friend of mine really had to say, Jay, sh- shame on you, yeah. you know, sure. like shame on you for not even has is he is he kind to you when you're when you know when you go on dates and then I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, he's actually the kindest I've ever had, you know, right. and they were like. What really matters? We judge way <laughs> too much on appearances. Exactly. Yeah, and God looks at the heart. I know somebody right now that will be getting married in a few months and loves, 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 loves the guy she's going to marry. But she said, my first look at him would have not been anybody that I would have been in even remotely interested in. But when she opened up her heart yeah. and gave him a chance... He had all the qualities that she wanted in a person, except he didn't look the way she thought she wanted her spouse to look. So how many people in emotions marry somebody because of the way they look based on feelings? Yeah. And they really don't have a handle on what true love is at all. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when the other things start coming out then that good-looking person doesn't look so good anymore. Right. Well, and also that that leads to so much of the problems in the world right now. Yeah. People who are judging one another because they look different yes. mm-hmm. or you know their skin is a different color or they don't respond in the same way as I would to something. Or they do something you something. don't think they should exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. So I think this conversation is so much bigger than just our relationships, which are hugely important, Absolutely. but it's societal. It's about culture right now. It really is. And there are a lot of choices that we have to make mm-hmm. that says, I need to know who this person is before I decide yeah. you know, if, if I'm going to be their friend or not before I write them off. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, just, it, it's so much division, and you kind of touched on it, Aaron. There's so much division in the church. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, you got the different denominations mm-hmm. you, within Christianity mm-hmm. that are warring against each other. And it's just, it's like, so it definitely goes beyond romantic relationships, Absolutely. husbands dating and things like, like that. It goes, it's big. It's about, can I love my neighbor mm-hmm. when we disagree mm-hmm. on things that we believe the Bible says? Mm-hmm. Right. Because we have people that are believing certain things that two different people that right. are Devout Christians mm-hmm. that believe this scripture says this. It's their mm-hmm. interpretation based off of their experience and their reality. Like, you know, that yeah. they will literally dislike each other. And almost, I've seen it in the church where they would almost dislike each other because they believe this and the other person believes this. Mm-hmm. But we're right. both Christian. Mm-hmm. Like, we're both, we both love Jesus. And so this is a conversation that need, we need to figure out and bridge the gap on how do we love mm-hmm. when we disagree? How do we agree yeah. to disagree and still say, you're still my brother or sister in Christ? You know, how do we do that? Yeah. So, so we could talk about what I just did if you want to. Let's oh, do it. What did you just do? Because people show don't always agree with what you're about to say. Well, I don't like. Stiff, starchy, judgmental, critical, religious Come on. Christians. Amen, yes. uh-huh. People who just, they've got a rule <laughs> about everything, uh-huh. and it's their own rules. Yep. Yeah. And actually, when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, he meant that old system mm-hmm. of legalism. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, obviously, we still follow the moral laws of the Old Testament, right. but all of the rules and regulations and the dietary laws and all these I mean there were certain materials you couldn't wear together and sacrifices and you couldn't everything was like you couldn't do right you know and um so a lot of people today well some people I don't know about a lot they really believe that like having a tattoo is very sinful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's right. a scripture in the Bible, right, that you think they're getting that from? Well, in Leviticus, and I don't know the exact reference, it says that you should not cut your body for the dead. Right. For like some kind of remembrance for the dead. So 
right there's your motive. Right. You know, people often don't look beyond the motive. So mm -hmm. there is a scripture in Isaiah somewhere, and I don't. I wish I would have brought these references with me. In the Amplified Bible, it says that some of these people, not the ones who disagree, but that people would get tattooed or engraved on their hand, I belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was so neat, mm -hmm. you know, to actually put a sign on your body for the devil to have to look at all the time. <laughs> yeah, every time. That's commitment. But, you know, because the Bible does say in Ephesians that we are marked and branded uh -huh. by the Holy Spirit as God's own. Mm -hmm. So actually, we do have a tattoo on us that the devil can see every one of us. Mm -hmm. It's just not one with ink. Mm -hmm. So I, <clears throat> I recently was in a situation where all the stars lined up and... Uh, <laughs> I got, I got two tattoos. No, yeah, you did. Not one, I got one but on my two. back. I have a cross on my back that says I belong to Jesus. Uh huh. And I didn't, you know, I didn't put it where everybody could see it. It's sure. my own business yeah. between me and God, and I, I just wanted to make that statement that I'm His. Yeah. And then I had one, one put on my foot that people can see that says love, and I did that to always remind me to walk in love. Mm, that's love, great. Love yeah. And so I thought, I've only shared it in one meeting, and I didn't know what I'd get. But I mean, people got up on their feet. They were clapping and cheering. Now, I know that we will get some letters mm -hmm. and some phone calls and some comments that people believe that is sinful. But you can't find that under the new covenant. Right. And Jesus looks at a person's heart. Mm -hmm. And so it's why people do things that matters so much to him. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had an experience one time. I walked in a Starbucks, and there was a girl there waiting on us. There were some other people with me. And her hair was about four different colors and going in about five different directions. <laughs> Sounds and like my kind of guy. She had, <laughs> she had tattoos and piercings everywhere you could have them. Well, I immediately, my religiosity, you can feel it mm -hmm. stand up. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, this girl has got issues. She has got, she's one of those, why, you know. You know, we just wild ones. We yeah. just start, start and, building a picture around who they are. Right. Yeah. But there was a man with us from England, who was more mature in that area, and he had gotten over all that a long time ago. So he, he just kind of stepped around me a little bit, and, and he just said, I love your hair. <laughs> How do you get it to do that? <laughs> and he just struck up this great conversation with her. And so really a lot of times we as Christians say that we want revival. Mm -hmm. But the truth is most churches, if they had a revival— they would be so judgmental mm -hmm. about the people that came in, in. Yeah. Yep. because they're not all going to be pretty like you and look like you, mm -hmm. and some of them may have tattoos and they may have piercings, and but that doesn't really tell you anything about their heart. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I think that's so good. I, it reminds me of when I watched The Chosen, um, and so you got to see the Jesus. series. The yeah, chosen, the series, yeah. the chosen about Jesus. About Jesus. Sorry, I only gave you like one word. And everybody people to guess know. what I'm talking about. <laughs> I did not. You I did. said the chosen girl. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> Joyce and Ginger helped me there on that one. Oh, um, it's good. You should watch it. <laughs> okay. Watching Jesus and how he related to people, they did such a good job of depicting him, and it made me see him in a whole different way. That it isn't. He's not letting you get away with things if no. if your heart's not in the right spot. That right, but. He loved people where they are, and he cared more about their heart and what they were going through and why they did it. That just really stood out to me in that series. And I think that that part gets glossed over a lot in the world that we live in. And I think in the church specifically, we forget that it is the motive. And it's not, did you do your list? Like, did you check your list off for today to make you a really good Christian? And if not, well, then you're, you don't qualify. And if we have the wrong attitude, we write people off. Yeah. We do. And make decisions about them. <clears throat> When we don't even know them at all, we mm -hmm. don't give people an opportunity to get to know them. And one of the statements I made in my book on loving people that's hard to love is we need to learn to love people as they are, not the way we want them to be. Yeah. yeah. And that doesn't mean they're right about everything, 
but you're certainly not going to change them by hating them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to set the example, and that was one of the things that Dave did for me that is part of the large reason why I'm sitting here today is he loved me as is, mm-hmm. and he prayed for me to change, but he knew that he could not change me, so he didn't try to. And we're always yeah. trying to change people, and the more you try to fit somebody into your mold of what you want them to be, the more they can't stand you, especially yeah. for somebody like you said who doesn't want to be controlled. Yeah. And I'm the same way either. It's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Dave loves to help me, and he tells me about <laughs> every. You know, I was gone last week for a week, <laughs> and he picked me up at the airport, and I wasn't in the car three minutes when he had already given me three pieces of advice. And I said, I don't want your advice. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how you survived that week without him. I just don't want your advice. <laughs> he said, I'm just trying to help you. I said, I don't want to be helped. I want you to just let me make my own decisions. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> we go through that all the time. He just wants to help me. Yeah. And I'm like this morning, I was using one of these little things that you pick out threads with. You know, I was trying to get a tag out of a piece of clothes. And he was like, don't do that like that. He said, you're doing it toward your face. I said, I have been doing this for years. I am not going to stick your my eye out. <laughs> Of course, at this point, we've been married so long, we just make a big joke out of it. Well, but, I, I love the fact, and, and you mentioned this in the book, and you mentioned it earlier, that, that loving people doesn't mean justifying what they did mm-hmm. or what they do. You know, maybe you've been hurt, but still loving them in spite of that. And it also doesn't mean you have to have a relationship with them necessarily, no. and it mm-hmm. doesn't even mean that you have to like them. Yeah. No. You can love them mm-hmm. and be kind to them and treat them in a loving way without liking them. It, it, you know, you think about people in the world that maybe you're having a hard time loving right now. It may not be that way a year from now. Like, yeah. there were times in my kids' life, and I love my kids <laughs> yeah. like crazy, but there were times that I did not like hey, them man. very well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I would say, you know, I love you so much, but I'm not liking you right now. (laughs) And I I just think that's kind of a release to people is to realize Mm -hmm. that it doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that everything's perfect. Right. People don't have to be perfect to love them in a guy's way. To be abused or let somebody walk all over you. But even if somebody, even if you have to leave somebody because they have abused you. You still need to love them, but what does that mean? I think it's important yeah, for us to do get that? that on this program. Yeah. You do ex- Jesus laid it out so plainly. He said, you, for- you forgive them, you pray for them, you bless and do not curse them. And to bless means to speak well of, and to curse means to speak evil of. Hmm. So you have to stop telling everybody hmm. what they did to you. You can't talk about them in a bad way. And if your enemy's hungry, you feed him. And if he's thirsty, you give him something to drink. Mm. So it's, it's become so clear to me that if you hurt me, that doesn't mean that maybe I don't confront you or we don't talk about it. But if it's getting nowhere and we're just going to be arguing, it's not my place to hate you. Yeah, It's my place to pray for you. And if you pray for somebody on a regular basis to have been mean to you, you cannot keep hating them very long. Mm-hmm. You will be able to forgive them because that prayer yeah. will work something in your heart. So you pray for the person, you stop talking bad about them, and you you get willing, if they have a need and you know about it, that you will help meet that need, no matter how you feel yeah. about it. I'm getting, I get emotional thinking about this, right? Because... Like, I, I've done a lot of work to try to, like, really love, you know, like, the people that were a part of, like, what destroyed my family, yeah. you know. And, like, I'm, I'm thinking about, I think it was chapter 16. I think, that, like, and that resonated. Even the title alone is just, it, it's just too hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just or it's too, not fair. <laughs> like, as you see, like, yeah. it just said, like, and it said, some things may be hard, but they're not too hard. Mm-hmm. And I believe God anoints and empowers his people to do difficult things at times. If we believe it's too hard, we quit before we've even tried. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, I can't quit. Mm -hmm. And even though it's been, I've been divorced now a year, I still don't want to see the mistress. I don't want to see him. 
I don't want to see his new wife. I don't want to see any of it. Like, yeah. and I'm and and I, I that's okay to have that boundary, but it's so freeing to me. And I, I oftentimes take it for granted, you know, that that we're able to sit here and discuss with some with you, mm-hmm. you know, like you're you're a, a general in the faith. Like people always say that, and I'm like, yes, and she's amazing. She's cool. She has cute little like. She has a tattoo. She has a tattoo. <laughs> I didn't even say that. I'm just like, she has cute polish on her toes, little flowers and stuff. Like, she's just so fancy. You know, I love it. But, to, like, what you just shared with the tattoo, like, and how you share, like, it just shows that someone that is as mature as you can honestly admit when you're, not, when you're having an immature moment mm-hmm. and judging someone for something but that you can also allow yourself to keep growing Mm -hmm. and changing and that gives me and I'm sure a lot of people so much hope to know that yes I still have areas of immaturity but if someone that's a general like Joyce can say you know what God's still working on me and improving me but I have to do the work and sometimes take a big step like go ahead and get a tattoo you know it gives me hope to know that I too can like really get to a place where I really do like I can really love him, not in that way. I ain't trying to romantically love him at all. But like love him yeah. again. But see, even the feelings that you're having, you don't want to be around the mistress. You know, there's really God understands all that, mm-hmm. and but that's not not loving them. The the loving them is the forgiving them, and really you do that for your own sake. Yeah, I mean you you can stay mad at them until. The cows come home, as they say, and it's not going to bother them. Right. You know, so you you forgive for your own sake so you can have some peace. They may not deserve your forgiveness, but you do deserve peace. Right. You pray for them. Pray for them to be happy. Pray for them to have a good relationship. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yes, see, when we list. pray for people, it's not like God's going to give them a brand new house and a big fancy car. Mm. Probably the first thing he's going to give them is some revelation about mm-hmm. what they've truly done mm-hmm. or how they've behaved. And you don't talk bad about them to other people. And if they ever did have a real serious need— to be willing to meet that deed, and I went through, I went through that. With, I went through that with my mom and dad, who abused me. And I just want to say this for the sake of the audience, and this this will probably help you. I ended up. God asked me to take care of them. We don't have time for that whole story, but they ended up in in nursing home care for ten years, with me footing the bill, which was not cheap. Mm-mm. And I went to see them. Every other week, and one of my daughters went the odd weeks, and I can sit here and tell you that in 10 years, there was not one time that I went to that nursing home that I wanted to go. Mm. I didn't feel like going. I didn't enjoy the visit, but I knew it was what God wanted me to do. And the thing that we have to get through our heads is Jesus did not want to go to the cross. Right. He asked the Father three times to take this cup from me. Yeah. But he always said, but I'll do your will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's the thing, mm-hmm. if we're ever going to get rid of this problem, mm-hmm. is we have to stop living by how we feel mm-hmm. yeah. and justifying our feelings and say, I'm going to live in obedience. I've been, wow. this past week, yeah. it's like everything I'm looking at is obedience, 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 obedience. That's the only way we prove our love for God. Mm-hmm. It's by obeying him. That's that's so hard to walk through. It it's so, it's just so difficult. And I had a situation a lot of years ago, and that that's why God God works through time in a beautiful way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just such a a terrible situation, and someone who hurt me very very badly just very publicly told all kinds of lies, and it it was just a a terrible, heart wrenching experience because this was someone that that I counted as a friend, mm-hmm. and it it was just awful. And I went through such a long time of anger and bitterness, and I that name was everywhere. The name of this person was like all <laughs> I could think of, you know. And you're just so hurt and so angry, and 
So after a long time of that, you, I began to like, God, I, I can't keep this up. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah. I can't be who you want me to be anymore. I don't even feel like myself. And so I started little by little when I could doing some of those things that you're talking mm-hmm. about. Um, stop telling everybody else about mm-hmm. that person. Right. That was one of the, one of the things. That's a big step right there. Yeah. It, it was hard. Because every time you, you talk about it, you stir it up yourself. Yeah. yeah. And when it's that much in, in your the forefront of your mind, it comes up all the time, yeah. you know, because you just want people to know. Yep. And so then the other one was the hard one of begin praying for good things for this person and, and forgiving. And I'll tell you, I didn't even realize it until years later. And I could not remember this person's name. <laughs> and to me, that was like God saying, I've done this complete healing in your life where I have taken the hurt from your mind. And I still pray for that person. I, I still do, because what happens still comes up. Because I remember their first name, and I pray for them. Yeah. But I honestly cannot remember their last name, yeah. which is a huge, mm-hmm. huge step. And, and to me, it's just a miraculous thing that God has done. And at one point, I was like, what is wrong with me? I need to remember that. Mm-hmm. And, and God just very gently put on my heart, it's like, no, you don't need that in your life. Right. You don't need that now. Yeah. And so... I, I'm just so grateful for what God does when, when I couldn't possibly yeah. do it. Well, I am really trusting God that this book is going to help mm-hmm. lots and lots and lots of people because there are so many people, just our discussion here today, who are literally making themselves miserable and yeah. ruining their lives over a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And God just asks us, He demands that we love one another. Jesus said, I'm leaving you with one commandment. Yeah. <laughs> one, if you do this one thing, mm-hmm. then everything else is going to work out all right. Yeah. Love people the same way that I have loved you. Yeah. And, um, and Jay, you've already come so far. Yeah. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. yeah. I feel it and I feel closer to God because of the anger and frustration and, and almost hatred. And I feel like there's a thin line between that. You know, so, you, so the fact that like the more I allow God to fill me up with love, I feel closer to him because he is sure, love. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know, he is love. And so like there was a, a point in, in this whole journey that I felt so disconnected to God. That's because I was so filled up with all of the, the junk of being angry, which I do believe that there's a season for all of that stuff when, when you're when, when you're done wrong, like, Mm-hmm. It's a season to, to to mourn and be upset and things like that. But like, like there has come a time where I'm like, I'm tired of being angry. Yeah, yeah. I'm That's just exactly it's exhausting. It's I'm tired of being it. right. I'm tired of being angry. Yeah. I just want the love of God to wash over me so that I can forget His name. No, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, more or less, it yeah. may not be a physical forgetting of His no, name, but, no, just, but God mm. will give you exactly what you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for you to realize the healing that he has brought right. in your life that you never knew was possible. Yes. The Thank reason you. why we're hurt by, like you said, the person that hurt you, you counted a friend. Your husband hurt you. Yeah. My parents hurt me. Your husband hurt you. People can't hurt you if you don't love them. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because if you don't love them, you, you don't care. You're not as touched. You don't like it, but you're not as mm-hmm. touched, yeah. Yeah. you know, by what people say. Yeah. And so... You can't, you just can't love and never get hurt. Yeah, that's true. I <laughs> you think really can't. One really, th- one thing that's really exciting to me about this book, or at least of yours, is when you wrote Do It Afraid, you wrote that, a co- I mean, the process of writing a book takes right. some time. And God knew what was going to come. So when that book was released, that the pandemic had just happened mm-hmm. and we were all full of fear. And we didn't know that. We when didn't I wrote know the that. Book. You had no idea when you wrote that book that. It was going to yeah. be at that moment. Well, now it's a couple of years past that point, and you have this book coming out at a time when we've all lived through a pandemic. We've walked through really hard issues as a culture mm-hmm. and individually in our homes where we have been with these people all right. the time. Yeah. And we all now... All the time. <laughs> oh, they're always, all they're the always time. there. Yeah. He never goes to work anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just got there. too personal. Sorry. <laughs> do you want to talk about that some more? Well, That's Dave fine. and I have worked together for 40 so years. Many years. That's so you should write a book on this, but I just yeah. think God's timing is so perfect, and it makes me excited to see how now we're ready for this message. We need now more than ever to hear how do we love these people in our lives right. that yeah. we now know we need to. And I just think we have 
the totally wrong understanding of what love is. Mm -hmm. I really believe that it's, everybody connects it to their feelings, and that's just not what it is. Yeah, it's not. It's not theory. It's not a sermon. Yeah, it's action. It's yeah. how you treat people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so important. Love is not theory. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not only when everything's perfect. It's not only when I'm not getting hurt. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. when everyone knows I'm right, <laughs> you know, love is something that only God can help us really do in the way that He wants us to. So we have Joyce's book available for you today. Of course, if you would like to get it, go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, and you can get the book for any amount. Uh, we just want to make sure that you're you're getting what God's Word says about how to love in the way that He does and see how it changes not only your life, but your family's life, the people all around mm -hmm. you, um, at every step that you take that is kind of a swallow of your pride and a lot of hard things, every one of them will be worth it in the long run. Right. So it's always do that thing today that you'll be glad you did later. Right. right? So we, we want to make sure not only that, but that um, we let you know about something else very, very important, and that is that our women's conference is so soon. It is <laughs> right around the corner. It's the Love Life Women's Conference. So Joyce is going to teach you more there about how to love those difficult people, so and good. we can still have you join us. It's not too late. You can still register. You can be there in person. Uh, September 22nd is when it all begins right here in St. Louis, Missouri or you can join us online either way. So go to joycemeyer.org and find out how to join us. We're all going to be there. We're going to yeah, have yeah. so, much so much fun. And it's our 40th anniversary, yeah. 40th Women's Conference. Please come and join us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I do love you all. We love you too. So well, it's much. So good we to know that. <laughs> it's so good to know that we, we yeah. are on the Write that down on that list. <laughs> You're let's, not let's on the bad list. I love it. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. And we love all of you too. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us. 